The No Man's Sky Beyond update has brought with it many changes, one of which is how you obtain blueprints and technology of all types. That was oddly well timed. So in this video I'll show you where to obtain all of the technology, building and crafting blueprints, new and old, and how it all works and how much it's going to cost you. Now as we're on my freighter, we'll start here. This is where to get a few of the blueprints for technology and consumables. This is specifically regarding the freighters. Right here is your freighter research terminal. This is in the freighter bridge. Obviously yours probably won't have trees. When you open up this menu, it will bring up here. Um, when you first get your freighter, when building a command room, you'll uh, gain the frigate fuel blueprints. Once you have these, you'll be able to then buy the fuel oxidizer, which is a frigate consumable, and then be able to get these other ones. They're quite cheap, as you can see, one salvaged frigate module. All of these cost salvage frigate modules to obtain. Look, I had all but this one already before the Beyond update. The salvage frigate modules are found on crash freighter locations. So just head there, rummage around and you'll get some. These consumable frigate upgrades are extremely useful and just fantastic and very helpful for, especially early on with your frigates, getting them to uh, come back safe with lots of goodies. This fuel oxidizer shortens the time it takes to do frigate missions. The mind control device gives you a plus 10 to trade. The holographic analyzer gives you a plus 10 to exploration. The mineral compressor gives you a plus 10 to industrial. And the explosive drones gives you a plus 10 to combat. The freighter warp reactor Sigma, Tau and Theta just give you flat bonuses to hyperdrive range. So 200 for the Sigma, 300 for the Tau and 800 for the Theta. I would suggest if you install them, doing them in this manner. This will allow the bonuses you gain from adjacency to give you the best outcome. So that's all the freighter and frigate stuff. Let's move on. Next up we're going to the Nexus. Now you will have need to have had the anomaly pop up beforehand to be able to summon it. This just requires going through a bunch of missions at the start. But don't worry, if you just carry on with them, you'll get there pretty, pretty soon. To summon it, just go into your quick menu and select. And there it is. Currently there are a few issues, though a patch has been added. I, for this video, will not be activating multiplayer just to be safe. So when you enter the Nexus, just head up either side. The left is probably slightly quicker. Head all the way up and to the back here. This is the research center where all of the anomaly researchers reside. We have from left going round, clockwise, starships, exosuit, multi-tool and exocrafts. So go here for your starship research. Once again here we have the tree. You'll start your game with the pulse engine, the launch thruster, the deflector shield and the photon cannon. And before you reach the anomaly you'll also gain the hyperdrive. Provided you start a new game the first time you enter here you'll at least have access to the teleporter, the cadmium drive, efficient thrusters, ablative armor, non-linear optics, photon cannon edition and all of the other main weapon modules. In order to get all the stuff below, you have to get the ones above. That's just, you know, basic tree stuff. The only new technology here for Beyond is the launch system recharger. This bad boy slowly over time will recharge your launch thrusters, which is pretty fantastic, extremely useful. Especially on those planets where you wander too far from your ship and you forgot to recharge it and don't have anything in your ship to recharge it with. So yeah. Very useful, and I'm probably going to have that on a few of my ships, especially in permadeath. Then let's move on to the exosuit. You'll start the game with life support, hazard protection, oxygen recycler and jetpack, meaning you have access to hazmat, all of the new hazard protection bonuses which add 21% to heat, cold, toxic and radiation, and the aeration is 34% to breathing, breathing efficiency. Oxygen rerouter, Neural Stimulator, Rocket Boots, and Efficient Water Jets. Now the new interesting ones really here are the translators. Each one will give you extra words trans auto-translated at random in conversations you have. The simple gives you one word, the next one gives you two, and the last one gives you three. Having all three of these for a total of six words in each conversation just translated is a massive deal so that will be really helpful for many explorers 
As you can see, they get quite pricey as they go along. With the last one, 580 nanites. That's uh, really not that bad, because it is a blueprint, so you only buy it once, and then just install and jobs are good. Then let's move on to multi-tool. You will only start the game with mining beam and bolt caster, giving you access to the personal force field, advanced mine laser, and waveform recycler. Which of course then give access to these three. Then with the bolt caster allows you access to the bolt caster's upgrade, the barrel ionizer, as well as the plasma launcher, but not the geology cannon. You need the plasma to get the geology. As well as the three other primary weapon modules. The new ones here are the optical drill and survey device. The optical drill for 460 nanites, which again, not bad if you think. But again, that's all purchasable from ships that fly in space stations and such. You just need to get lucky to find the right vendor. This will give you 50% more resources with your mining boom, which is pretty damn good. Definitely an addition I'll be adding. The survey device allows you to find those really cool hidden things on planet surfaces, like the deep veins and the cool locations on extreme planets that have... Uh, extra thick gases, clouds, basically all the stuff you need to make factories. And that'll only cost you 320 nano, so quite a good uh, investment there. Then we'll move on to the Exocraft. Now to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about this, I'm pretty sure there are no new things here. I didn't do a whole lot of research into Exocrafts when they were upgraded with the Nautilus and such. I was uh, busy with Red Dead at that time and I never really caught up. But um, as you can see, yeah. Just an another tree, that's oddly cheap. I'm just going to get that while it's still cheap. I've got a feeling they're going to alter that at some point. And the rest, basically everything up here is nanites out of the four I've showed you. And now for the last one. This is essentially a giant big brain blueprint analyzer. If you've looked at your blueprint analyzer, you'll realize that you can't get a lot of things. You can only get specific things, and you've heard there's more, like nutrient processors and such like that. Well, for that you need to go here, the Construction Research Centre. As you can see, you have all of the items for building that you could possibly want, and you can gain them here for salvage technology. So just use D or whatever it is on your platform to head through the menu. So large prefabs, small prefabs, technology modules, this is probably the big one. Um, I'd say the nutrient nutrient processor here for 10 salvage technology Short-range teleporter another one. I really really want for uh, 10 salvage technology. I need to uh, get some more salvage data immediately Oh, it's called salvage data now as well used to be salvage technology uh, Here's another big one having galactic trade terminal in your base just makes things so much easier because They sell microprocessors and other such things which are often used in building and here, another really interesting one, the antimatter reactor. This essentially makes antimatter for you, which is pretty cool. No more relying on a thousand red barrels, although I've still got them all, I'm afraid to, so I'll probably still use them. As well as here, we have the livestock unit and the automated feeder. These are used for automated animal farms, and also both cost 10 of data. Landing pads were taken out. But if you had the blueprint before, don't worry, you've still got it. You've just, yeah, got to rebuild them because they're way bigger now. So they just took them out of everyone's builds because it would just kind of phase in with everything and destroy it. So, yeah. And if we carry on to the right, we've got the transport modules, which is all the stuff for race initiators, for races, exocrafts, and so forth. Aquatic construction. Nothing new in these two. Nothing new in decals. Decorative modules more decorative illumination now here's industrial modules this stuff is all all new so we've got electrical wiring which was free uh wall switches and such are all one salvage data you've got the mineral extractor 10 these are all 10 except for the supply pipe gas extractor supply depot supply depots are used to store gas extractor extracts gas i know it's uh Quite surprising, isn't it? I did not expect that one. Supply pipes are used to connect things to the extractors and depots to uh, enable storage from the main device. We've got biofuel reactor, solar panels and batteries. 
Then we've also got the electromagnetic generator. This utilizes hotspots, basically high energy locations, which you can find with the survey device to basically give you unlimited power. Well, not unlimited power in scope, unlimited power in that it will never run out. And these switches are all used to basically make complex circuits, which I'm going to be diving into head first in this update, hells yeah. Then carrying on, we've got uh, all the agriculture modules, wooden shelters, metal shelters, concrete shelters. I know there's a few I don't have, isn't there? I don't know what happened there. Primitive shapes. And then we're back to large prefabs. So this is a huge blueprint analyzer with a crap ton of different trees. And uh, yeah, of course, this is just one way to get things. You can get a lot of these things in various different ways through conversations or through the base missions. So to be honest, to save you time just grinding and an insane amount of salvage data, I would recommend that you certainly do the base missions do some other stuff with Nardra and Polo, they give you some different blueprints and such. The salvage data can be found by basically looking on planet surfaces. Scan like this and look for this icon, Buried Technology Module. This is what you're after. These are what you need to buy all those blueprints for construction. Just use E to tag or whatever it is on your platform and head over. Switch to your terrain manipulator, unearth it, and then interact. And you'll gain up to four. So I gained three this time, which is great. It didn't take too long to find quite a lot of these, but obviously when you're getting that many things, it can be a bit of a grind. So just, uh, just do it in bits and make sure you get exactly the things you want and don't just get everything and then have nothing to get, say, the nutrient processor. I only got two that time, that's a shame. Hello, word. Thank you. I am here. This is a beautiful planet, by the way. A little bit of trivia. This is actually the planet that I uh, originally called home in the galactic, old galactic hub in Atlas Rises, in the system of time. And this is the planet where my legacy base, which was the old stasis device base, uh, resides. Ooh, not a fan of the storms, though, but this grass, holy crap, it's beautiful. Right, next, on to the last of the blueprints, which is, of course, crafted trade good blueprints. In order to get to the menus where you can find all your crafted trade good blueprints, you'll need to locate a manufacturing facility. The manufacturing facilities can no longer be found by using a signal booster and the navigation data together. You might be able to look out and get it by doing the random scan, but I wouldn't count on it. So the way you do it now is you get navigation data either from those pedestals on planets with the red floaty cubes on them or you get it from red barrels as well as the little floaty things in space stations and stuff. You then go to a space station, any space station will do, and talk to the cartographer. The cartographer in a space station will trade either nanites or navigation data, so you could just use nanites, for planetary coordinate data. You can then just use this coordinate data to find random locations on the planets. Unfortunately, you basically now need more than you used to of nav data and so forth. This planet coordinate data will then just give you a random waypoint. So basically, just kind of use them until you get a manufacturing facility. You then complete the riddle at the manufacturing facility to gain access to the menu itself. Another method would be to just fly above scanning. The scanning has been massively improved and uh, will, is more likely to show you a building that's nearby. Which is actually what I did for this video. Just flew over, scanned and eventually found a manufacturing facility. And here we are. Here is the sort of trees for learning craftable things. So here we have the dihydrogen jelly which you would already have so you have access to get these. Unfortunately, you need to get these, well, the ones respective to it, in order to get the cobalt mirror, so tetra cobalt for the mirror, and so forth. It used to just give you a random one. This is a star shield battery, this is a new thing. It's basically like a condensed power for recharging your starship shields. Though, the fact that you can carry 10,000 sodium nitrate and so forth 
Depends. Depends whether you want to uh, bother with stuff like this. This is also a new one, the Warp Hyper Core, which allows you to basically make just really powerful warp cells. Great for saving space. The next menu has the valuable products, which has stuff like the stasis devices, infusion igniters, and so forth. It is great that you can now choose what you want. Previously, a right answer would hopefully give you a blueprint. Now you can choose if you get units, nanites, or blueprints, and yeah, pretty fantastic. You will get quite a few of these, like the acid, lubricant, unstable gel, glass, polyfiber, liquid explosive, living glass, heat pasta, and circuit board from doing your main missions. The main base mission specifically. You need a whole lot of uh, recipes to get make stasis device and such, but I would recommend going back through this menu. So for stasis device, focus on one of them at a time. So for stasis device, you need quantum processor, cryogenic chamber, and redesite. So for a redesite, you need aronium, magna gold, and grantine. So get the aronium, magna gold, grantine, iridocyte. Leave the rest for the moment, because you just don't need them yet. Remember, you can also refine these, so maybe leave these to last and focus on the others first, which means going for the portable reactor, quantum, cryogenic, then stasis. This one only has the two menus. Also, everything costs the factory override unit, which you get from overriding factories. You get one per one. I did an operation center earlier, uh, which also gave me one, and now the manufacturing facility, which gave me another one, so I've got two. So I think I'll go for the new stuff because cool. And there you have it. There is all of the blueprints and technology crafting items and building stuff. That's how to get all the blueprints, well at least one of the ways, as well as the type of things you'll need to afford them. Now don't worry, I'm already making my way through the files, so I'll be working on some tables which will give you all the information including exact amounts of nanites and salvage data and other such things. That these things cost to gain making a few little calculators that you'll be able to do they'll be, all be present on zanesworld.com of course i'll do a video and a post and stuff when those things are up you can access the website as well as the discord and merch store and whatnot in the pinned comment below i'd highly recommend the discord we've got a pretty awesome group of people there so thank you for joining and have an awesome day folks